So how to get clients, especially get them quickly. I'm gonna offer you a couple of ideas in this video that I hope will be helpful. And I look forward to your comments or your questions below. Now, before I get to, to the ideas, let me just kind of give you an overall uh, sense of um, how clients really decide to work with you, right? It's really an organic process, uh, especially if you're not <laughs> trying to get clients by manipulation or uh, pushing them, pressuring them, which I know everybody watching this doesn't want to do. So the organic process of getting clients is like, well, the organic process of growing life, right? Let's say you say you're growing a garden. Um, do you, or uh, the better analogy, let's say you're growing an orchard, okay? Um, a, a, a whole uh, orchard of fruit trees. So when can you harvest the fruit? Do you harvest the fruit immediately when you start planting the orchard? No. Right? It takes time for, to plant the seeds, nurture them, water them, make sure the, the trees are healthy, and then the fruit comes naturally. And then the low-hanging fruit, you've heard that, is the easiest ones to pick and to be able to, to enjoy your harvest. The same thing with getting clients. Ideally, you don't just say, gosh, I haven't done, been doing anything in my marketing, and now I want to get clients right away, and it should happen. Well, that, that's where you get into um, the territory of manipulation. And if we're still using that same analogy. Uh, it's like using um, artificial you know, fertilizers or, or harsh methods of trying to extract, make a life grow faster than it naturally does. And it becomes more distorted that way and less healthy for everybody involved. So... Ideally, you would give it time with consistent marketing actions so that the life itself will organically develop. And, you know, by this point, for example, I have been showing up consistently, you know, week after week. Um, of course, I take, I take one week off every six to eight weeks nowadays. So, but still, I'm consistent throughout the rest of the year. And then, not, not surprisingly, I have a Gratefully, I've, been waiting, I've had a waiting list of clients for, for years now, starting after about two years after consistently showing up. It took me about two years. But still, I want to offer you some quicker ideas because even though you want to do things or, uh, authentically or organically, you still need to fill the client group or the group program you know, starting in two weeks or you want to get clients this month or whatever. So let me give you a couple of ideas and, uh, and then uh, look forward to your to your comments and your questions. So the first idea is personal invitation. Um, I really think people don't do this often enough. Um, people think, I wanna get clients right away, and then they go ahead and start posting on social media. And I'm like, well, that's good, but did you know that social media is more or less a long-term activity? Did anyone tell you that you can go on social media right away and get clients? I'm sorry, but I don't think they were telling you the truth. Now, of course, there's always low-hanging fruit. Sometimes you post on social media and some of your friends might see it and uh, you know, they, might, they might sign up, but it's not something you do like, you can't really repeat that. I mean, you, you repeat that, you know, you, sure, you go ahead and post on social media today, you might get a few inquiries, but then you do it next month. You could, those same people have already seen it if you haven't been growing your audience. So personal invitation is more powerful than social media because you are, well, customizing the outreach to each person. Um, this is true. Uh, I, I've seen it true so many, for so many years. Like I have several clients who have group programs and they fill every year and they do it mostly through personal invitation, meaning to email or send a private social media message or even a text message, whatever is appropriate for the relationship. But first come, come up with a list of people within your network, within, you know, look at your list of Facebook friends or look at your phone book or look at the people you've been emailing with for the past year. Come up with a list of people and narrow that list by, I think these people really would be interested or might be interested in what I offer and I would 
so enjoy working with them. So then when you reach out to them, you express that. You express it personally to say, um, Bob, Jane, you know, you email each one of them separately. Um, I want to let you know that I have this program coming up. I have this service that I offer. And I thought about you because, fill in the blank, this is where you say at least a sentence or two about what you know about them based on your relationship with them. I, you know, I, I know that you've always been interested in this, or you have been um, seeking to kind of grow in this area of your life, or in our conversations, I sensed that this uh, service might be beneficial for you. And, you know, I, I would be, I would be honored uh, to be able to serve you in this way if it's really of interest to you. Now, by the way, personal invitation, you might feel like it's too forward um, or you know, you're too shy about making a direct offer. And if that's the case, you can soften it by saying, I wanted to reach out because I have room for clients or I have a program coming up and there's openings. And I just wanted to see if you knew of somebody, you knew of anyone who might be interested. It's really for people who are fill in the blank. And here's where you can actually list out uh, a few characteristics of the ideal client that actually matches the person you're writing or matches the people that you believe they, they know. So doing, a personal, doing personal invitations are, like I said, it's not usually, people don't do it because they're too shy or they don't even think to do it. They think they could just somehow wait for people to word of mouth to come in. But personal invitations really make a difference. So if you haven't done personal invitations uh, in, in a while, like you do them once a year, it's totally appropriate to do so, and maybe even once every six months. Now, um, if you do it like you could even do it once every you know month, except reach out to you know 10 different people each month. And then maybe you have a list of 120 and you reach out to you know each 10 people. Uh, once a year, essentially. So personal invitations, very uh, impactful because it's rarely done. And it's when it's done, it's not done thoughtfully, like the way I've been saying. So if you do it, and if you do it thoughtfully with genuine care, and also here's one more thing I'll say, is um, give the other person an out. You know, like don't make it pressurized in a way where it's like, you know, I really need clients and I really hope you'll say yes. And uh, please, please refer me a couple people, you know, um, or, or just say, hey, I really think this is for you. Don't you? You know, don't, don't, don't say anything like that. That makes me feel like, oh, what am I going to say? If I say no, it, it, you know, it feels like I'm straining the relationship. So instead, you should say something like, but hey, if this thing, you should end the email or message. Like, hey, but hey, if this thing is not, it's not what you're looking at totally um, you know, totally fine. Of course, I just wanted to make sure um, you received my personal invite because I thought of you for this. Um, but either way, I want to thank you for, you know, for, for being, being uh, uh, one of my, you know, supporters or um, one of my friends or whatever. So personal invites. All right. The second way is to create content related to your offer. Now, I hesitate to say this because I have often said, or maybe not often enough, that ideally when you put out free content, like when you make videos on you know, social media or when you write articles, ideally content is separated from selling. Like you don't put a free video up there. You know, people are watching it, they're enjoying it, and really you're trying to sell something and then by, by the middle to the end, now they realize, oh, this was a sales pitch the whole time, right? Same thing with reading an article. Have you ever read an article? It's like, oh, this was, so I hesitate to say it, but because I'm talking to those of you who need clients as soon as possible, I want to reintroduce this idea. Now, let's do it in a way that is actually um, authentic and uh, possibly even useful. But the, the, I'll say, I'll talk about authentic first. When we create offer-related content or sales-related content, okay, like you, you're putting stuff on social media, um, you know, people, when they go on social media, they're not going, hmm, 
I wonder how many things I could buy today, or I wonder how many sales pitches I can look at, right? They're looking on social media for some entertainment, essentially, um, to relax, to enjoy themselves, et cetera. So when you put content out there, even though it's related to your offer, you're trying to sell something, try to bring some entertainment value into it. So a couple of ideas is, of course, one is to tell, the st- tell some kind of story. Make it a story that brings your ideal client. Imagine your ideal client, your ideal prospective client reading your social media post, okay? They have a problem that you can solve or they have a yearning that you can help them you know, uh, experience. All right, you got that? Okay, so what would be a, a success story you could tell from your work that would give them optimism or hope that, ah, oh, it's possible to get there? So it's, and it's, it's a success story that, that uh, is either true from your work with clients and that you feel confident you can reproduce those kinds of results We're not promising results. We're telling a story about what's possible and to say that this is the kind of work you love doing with clients, right? So not that you're saying, you know, sign up and you'll get the same, you'll get the same experience, but that, um, so, and by the way, it could be your own story, by the way. So it's either someone you've worked with or your own story, or it could be an imaginary situation just don't let it be like a hype up thing. Like, oh, sign up to work with me. Like if I would, as a business person, I would say, sign up to work with me. If you sign up, you know, let me tell you a story of this, you know, John, who, when they signed up to work with me, they instantly earned six figures in, in 30 minutes, you know? So, so let it be a story that inspires what is possible for people to get them out of whatever issue that they're facing or to help them achieve the yearning that they have. Ideally, it's grounded in reality, and if you, even if you tell a possible story, tell it in a way that you feel confident the people who work with you will get this kind of experience, not that you're promising results, but that you're promising that they, that you're kind of caring for them along that pathway toward that result. So um, in that story, hopefully, you'll also include like a couple of tips they could use right away to help them get on the way towards, towards the success. Um, Another uh, content offer related content would be what is a foundational piece of knowledge? Okay, think about your ideal client, the person who you would love to work with you. What's something that you are often surprised that people don't understand? Like when you start talking to prospective clients or we're talking to friends who, um, you know, who might seem like your client, like what's something you're surprised? that they don't understand that you understand. Start to notice these things because that's what you can write about, okay? Write about that thing or speak about that thing that whether or not they work with you, they'll still benefit. But you can say in that piece of content that, you know, I often find, uh, I wish more of my, my, you know, people who start working with my, my services understood this. And then you, you talk about what that thing is. You help them understand it. And then at the end, you could say, um, now that you understand this, you know, if you want to do additional work you know, or to do the work with me, I would be grateful. To, I'd love to talk with you about it. Okay. Um, and then finally, I'll, uh, one more story you could tell is why you created your service, why you created your program, your product, your service. Um, sort of what was the passion and the, and the, and the sort of the drive towards helping the world or helping yourself could be um, and people like you that motivated you to create this because that's that's also a story but it's related directly to your service to your offering so anyway i hope that these are some ideas to say well i guess if i need clients right away i could i still could use content but make it more closely related to service now having said that i hope that you will still show up consistently on social media for the long term to just give without selling all the time. But I'm saying for those of you who like need clients yesterday, you can, you can occasionally do this kind of sales related content. And I think it's acceptable if it's occasional, if it's occasional. So, all right, next up, next idea is have you, how many times has your audience or uh, your email list seen your offer 
this month in the last 30 days. I recommend that they see your offer at least two times in 30 days on every single channel. Let me say that again. Whether you're talking about emailing your, your subscribers, you should let them know two times about your offer within 30 days. And probably within, um, I mean, if it's a launch of a program, it's probably within two weeks. But if it's like, um, if it's your one-on-one -on -one service and it's, there's no deadline to start, then um, I hope you'll, you'll, uh, you'll do it within 30 days. Um, so, okay. So a lot of you don't do this. A lot of you like, you, you put something out. First of all, a lot of you don't even, <laughs> don't even put on your social media or your email newsletter, hey, this is what I sell. This is the service that I love providing. And I know a lot of you don't even know about this. And every time I ask this of an audience, I say, how many of you in the last 30 days have posted on your social media that you provide this service? And then it's like crickets. I get, you know, out of like 100 people, there might be like 10 people who raise their hand. Okay, maybe another five who intended to raise their hand. But it's a, it's a, it's a minority of people. And my cat totally agrees with that. So you should totally take her um, agreement as a strong endorsement of this idea. So um, this, you know, this is why I always tell people, like, listen, once a month is not too often. Once a month, every single month, you should put on your social media and also in your email newsletter, this is the service I provide. I wanted to make sure you knew about it. If you know somebody who could use this, could benefit, please share this with them. Please let them know because I love doing this for, for my clients, okay? And then when you, if you're doing a launch, if you're like trying to fill a group program, right? Or to sell an online course, then you need to make that announcement at least two times in every single platform. So on Facebook, two posts in the course of like a week to two weeks, right? To three weeks. Um, on your email newsletter, same thing, you know? Uh, two emails in the course of two, three weeks, whatever the timeline is that when you start doing it until the deadline, okay? On Instagram, two times. On LinkedIn, two times. On YouTube, two times, whatever, right? Like you need to let them know more than once. Repetition is important. Some advertisers say, oh, you need to repeat it seven times to 20 times, you know? And I don't think, I, I, I think that's too much. That's why we all hate advertising, right? Two to three times, is honestly enough within the th within a particular three week window, like two to three times within a three week window, is enough and is needed, so that you feel confident that they have at least seen it and considered it. Right, it takes them a few times to see it. Next, idea number four is promotional partners. Um, what I mean by this is you have colleagues who have an audience, who have a network of people that would likely benefit from what you do, from the service you provide. You have friends, acquaintances, and colleagues. Look at your list of Facebook friends and look at your LinkedIn contacts and ask yourself, do, I, are any, do any of these people have a blog, have a YouTube channel, have a Facebook business page, uh, or you know, they talk about business on their Facebook profile, have an Instagram account, um, and might they, now here's the next question, might they themselves be interested in the service that I provide? This is really useful. A promotional partner, ideally, is somebody that already likes you and trusts you and themselves want the service that you provide. Because if they want the service, then you can approach them and say, hey, I would, be, I would love to personally give you the service for free. Yes, this is the one time that I'm, I'm okay with you giving away your service for free instead of charging for it. Not like for a year, but like for like one, two or three sessions. Or maybe you, you create an online course, you give them access to the online course for free. You give them free access in a, in a limited way, in a way that's sustainable for you so that they can really experience it and talk about it to their audience if they really find it helpful and, and that they think their audience would be a benefit. Uh, from this. And finally, the fifth idea is that if, if you've been trying all these different things, if you've been trying to do personal invitation, social media outreach, content related to offers, right? Promotional partners, you tried all these and you still have a hard time getting clients and you really feel like you've 
contacted, you know, like through all of your efforts, you've contacted at least a hundred, if not several hundred people, just several hundred people have seen it, whether social media or a few dozen people you contacted privately, they still, you still have a hard time getting clients. Then the fifth idea basically is you need to make your offer a better match for your, for your audience. I say this often, the secret to making selling easy is to sell what people want, not just anybody, but sell what your audience wants. So you need to have one-to-one -one conversations. You need to talk with your audience to find out what are they going through right now in terms of a problem or like a deep yearning that is something you could pr provide a solution to, right? How have they been trying to solve the problem? And you know what, have they, what product or service have they been using? Because whatever product or service they've been using or thinking of buying, well, maybe you should align yourself with that kind of product or service. Like look at, look at what they're thinking of buying and it's like, hmm, how could I provide my version of that, right? And uh, if they're willing to give you feedback, literally on what you've written up as your sales page or your description of your, of your product or service, ask them, you know, especially those who are really supportive of your work, ask for their feedback. So, hmm, how can I change this so that's more appealing to the ideal client? What, what, what needs to be different about this? So I hope this is helpful. And I, I'll bring you back to the reminder that ideally sales selling is a long-term process that if you just keep showing up consistently every week on social media in service, in service, just give out free content, you build an audience that when you do sell that one time a month, right, two times a month, they will be much more open to it, more and more so over time. So I hope this helps and I look forward to your comments or your questions below. Thanks for joining me.